Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining our customer success podcast, the CSM practice, where we actually dive into the difficult questions. And if you have ever worked at a company that had a TAM or had a CSM and thought it was the same role or asked yourself, should we have both roles in our organization or just get rid of one? Because maybe the CSM can do it all or the TAM can actually do some CSM activities what is the right answer here? And so I brought in this amazing person that actually worked as a technical account manager to explain what this role is. She also worked as a technical account manager with CSMs. I'm going to dig in and ask her what worked. And so with that, Sol, Rafael, thank you so much for joining our show again. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. For those of you who are watching Soul for the first time, she's also been on our channel before. So check out her previous episode as well. It was pretty snazzy, pretty cool. So, okay. So in your past life, you worked as a technical account manager. Is that not the case? It is the case. I'm currently a solution engineer and project manager, starting to direct my own uh, department in customer services at Joint, our travel tech startup based in Jerusalem. And I've been a TAM before. My previous position was at EasySend, also an amazing startup, a little bit bigger. My position there was a TAM, Senior Technical Account Manager, and I've worked there a lot with other customer success managers from another team. And we did have a lot of conflicts of like, whose territory is this? Why are you talking to my customer without letting me know, et cetera? So I think this is a pressing issue that we need to sort out today. Having that experience of being a Technical Account Manager and been working with a CSM, what are some of the biggest issues of having both roles in an organization? I know it's two different roles. It does require two different specialities to be a technical account manager and to be a customer success manager. A technical account manager is based in the areas between project management. Again, it can vary between companies, but these are the main criteria that we can base on. In your organization, what were some of the challenges in working with a CSM as a technical account manager? The main one are whose territory is this? Who's the main point of contact for the customer? Who is talking to the customer about general issues that don't have to do with technical issues? Who needs to manage the overall account? I think these are the most common issues that I've encountered managing accounts with customer success managers. And other situations that I used to encounter was when I, as a TAM, had a very good and profound relationship with the customer, don't I step into the customer success manager's arena? Shouldn't he be the one that's closest to the customer? Shouldn't I just be on the technical side? So that's also a lot of the issues that we had. When looking back, and if you had to generate that role or both roles in your current organizations, because you're going to be a director of customer services, obviously you would have that ability. If you had to generate both roles again in a new organization based on your learnings and experience, what kind of swim lanes would you have structured for both roles to avoid these challenges? The first thing that needs to be done is having clear swim lanes. This is where the customer success manager lies. He needs to do the upsells, cross-sells, have his weekly calls with the customer. But the technical account manager is the one in charge of the technical issues. He would update the customer success manager. So he's on the loop on the technical aspects that are still like open with the customer. So he's not blindsided at any call, but he doesn't need to manage those. Those are part of the technical account manager's plate. And that's his mandate to rule. The thing that can solve all of this is having like a way to discuss things together, like having a one-on-one -on, -one on customers having a good communication between everyone and supporting this inside the organization to prevent ego wars and stepping on each other's toes. Because all in all, it's two different swim lanes. And they are meeting sometimes, but they're two different swim lanes. You can just say hi and keep swimming. Who owns quarterly business reviews? Customer success manager. As a technical account manager, I like to be in depth in every account that I had. I've also used to go over support tickets. I like knowing everything that's going on with my customers. You do need to give the respect of managing the QBR to the customer success manager. Who owns escalations? It starts with the TAM. He escalates to his director. And then the customer success manager can be the third point or second point of escalation in a way as the overall manager of the account. If there's multiple escalation tickets, who provides the status updates for the customer? 
and how if it's a technical issue the technical account manager needs to do that in case it's like a complicated account then i would involve the customer success manager up to a level but i do think again it needs to be split out because you don't want to overload both TAMs and customer success managers to attend each other meetings. It doesn't make any sense. You don't need two people to be on the same meeting. But yeah, all in all, I do want everyone to be aligned and create one point of knowledge so everyone knows where the customer's status is. Who owns technical adoption? Technical? It's at the technical account manager. Straightforward. Okay, so product adoption, the technical account manager owns. Can they be held responsible and accountable for the percentage of utilization, consumption, frequency of use, breadth and depth of features adapted? I think the beginning of the general adoption and like, I think so. But yeah, I think going into feature adoption and special feature requests and all of that should be managed by the customer success manager. I think it goes from the specific level that should be at the technical account manager's level to things that are more general related to the account that should be managed by the customer success manager. If it's new features, new use cases, you're expecting the customer success manager to lead because they need to sell the business case. But once they started activating a certain feature, if there's any technical issues using those, the technical account manager would do that. But if it's just a matter of an end user training and making sure that the feature is embedded in a core business process, you would leave it to the CSM to do. Did I get that right? Or do you think about it differently? I think so. There's also a little bit of a semantics because if it's a technical guidance that you need to provide the customer, then I would expect the customer success manager to lead it as a request. But to approach the technical account manager, which might do it in the end, or open a ticket for the implementation team. At that level, I think that's if I just narrow it down a little bit. So the technical account manager doesn't own adoption. The only step in when there's a barrier to success from a technical product standpoint. Yes? Yeah, definitely. It's I like would... a Swiss knife for the CSM. Use it as needed, but they don't own the account. They own the technical success of the account. So whether it's multiple support tickets and there's like a little bit of a mess that support can't handle it, somebody needs to manage, it's like 10 support tickets, the technical account manager will step in. If there's a hot fix that's being developed by R&D, the technical account manager can manage the communication with the customer. Because in your opinion, should a technical account manager always be designated or dedicated resource? Or can we also do a pooled model with some accounts? We tried that at EasySend and I don't think it worked well. It can change if it's a high touch or a low touch. I'm a person that gets attached to customers. I like all the customers that get my way, but I don't like the pool idea. And I think it should be a designated thing. Even with developers, I do think there's a better management when you get to know your specific materials, you know the customer, you know their technical demands and everything, and you're well acquainted with the account. Let's talk about organizational structure and what's optimal. Some companies that do have a technical account manager and a CSM likes to put them in pods. That means that they would probably own multiple accounts together versus having the technical account manager work with multiple CSMs on the five accounts that they are dedicated or designated to. I think it's a good idea. Again, it has to do a lot with the relationship. I think if the relationship is good, it could be great because you're always working with the same one and you get along and everyone knows their job. If there's discommunication between the departments or the stakeholders here, then you can just being with one can create a lot of conflict throughout a lot of accounts. So it's also a disadvantage. There's other things that CSMs do with accounts or customers. One of them is, for example, having a relationship with the executive sponsor and giving them updates on an ongoing basis. Did you ever find yourself as a technical account manager in a position where you actually developed a relationship with the executive decision maker? And if so, what kind of things did you communicate to them that you felt was valuable and interesting for them? In my position as a technical account manager, I overshadowed my customer success managers a bit. I used to work with European markets, specifically with German customers, and I did create a relationship that was very profound. So I was the one ruling the account and the customer success manager was a side on managing the account on a general level. But again, I was the more dominant one. So I did work with executives. To be honest, I think it's a disadvantage. The profession of being a customer success manager is a different profession. The same way that I, as a project manager, don't 
know enough about doing upsells and cross sells and managing a QBR the way that a customer success manager does. I can do it well, I can swim, but will I swim fast? Will I be semi Michael Phelps? No, probably not. So I do think we should keep it as it is. We should keep everyone on mastering their profession because that's what keeps the company and the role strong facing the customer. I'm just going to play devil's advocate. Some accounts or some organizations also have an account manager role. Did you guys have sales rep attached to the account, a CSM and a TAM? We had all three. All three. And so why is the CSM owning upsells and crosses? Shouldn't the account manager own that? In EasySend, they stop at the sales. Also in joint, the account manager manages the sale. Once the customer signs, it goes into the customer success. We might consult with them because they know the customer from the grooming phase, but no, that's it, the customer success manager's territory. But it's interesting what you're suggesting. It will happen with larger organizations. And so in that respect, from what I typically seen work well, is the account manager will own sometimes the renewal, sometimes they will have a renewal manager for that matter, but he will own any kind of financial transactions. And so the role of the customer success manager at that point would not be to handle escalations, obviously, but it would be to ensure that the customer is adopting and using the solution and also potentially find additional use cases or additional business processes that they can impact. And that's all related to value cycle. Some would say, yeah, the account manager should do that too. And I think that it makes more sense for the customer success manager to lead. They should be positioned as a business trusted advisor versus a product expert and leverage and lean into the technical account manager as the product expert. Now, granted, they need to know enough about the product. Otherwise, probably the customer wouldn't want to talk to them. But even if they do know, they should delineate very technical questions to the technical account manager. So for example, let's say they had a conversation in a QBR and they found a few additional use cases that are a priority for the customer. The next step sole is typically to create a success plan. And so I wanted to ask you, in that organization where you worked as a technical account manager, did you ever create success plans for the customer with that process? What was your role versus the CSMs or what would you have expected that to be in an ideal situation? We did create success plans. It was again, managed both by me and the customer success manager together. When I would go into the technical specification, going with the implementation team, the developer and the integrator to go into the, the technical details with the customer, while the customer success manager stays on the use case, how many people are going to use it, what effect it's going to have and how we can take it into a full expansion for that matter. So in that way, the road got split to those swim lanes that we discussed earlier in a clear path. Would you say that the technical account manager should manage the technical aspect of a success plan, whether or not it relates to an upsell? Sometimes a success plan is just digging in more on stuff that the client already owns and just making sure that they get maximum value from what they purchased so that when the renewal comes, there's no discount conversations. So were you the quarterback for deciding whether we need a solution architect, a system architect, do we need R&D services sold here? Were you kind of like managing and coordinating that? Or was the CSM deciding those types of things? In my experience, this customer success manager just dove too deep into those technical aspects and then sometimes got complicated. They did mistakes because again, they're not that savvy in the technical aspects. Sometimes they want to upsell. So then they just say, yeah, we can do this and that when we can't. In joint right now, it's working differently because it is split. But on the other hand, I think that it's good for the customer success manager to have enough technical knowledge and depth to also know how to look at the numbers for the customer without the technical account manager and say, okay, here is where I think we can improve. And maybe just confide with the TAM to, okay, how can we improve it? But I can see the numbers here. I do expect of a certain level of understanding from the customer success manager, not just to stay at the top of things, but to go a little bit deeper, going into the numbers. We have dashboards, for example, showing conversion rates and click-through rates. I do expect the customer success manager to rule that. We do have that in our company, but I do expect sometimes to already like start asking the questions 
So the technical people, the solution engineers or the project managers can take that into like technical tasks. If you take a look at your experience as a technical account manager and you work besides you with other technical account managers, what makes a great technical account manager superb at their work in terms of skills, maybe even investments in the product knowledge, et cetera? I think someone that likes to learn, always learn new technologies, getting to know the product on the technical level, not just demos, understanding the product, understanding tickets, understanding what the developers do, knowing how to assess what they do so they don't give too long of time estimations, and also getting to know the customers well. I do think that it's important for technical account managers to be the main point person for the customer on the technical level. So it's important for them to be people person. Also with everything that has to do with communicating with the customer success manager, they need to be team players. They need to be people that know how to play together with other team members, the developers, the QA team, because basically the technical account manager manages the technical resources for the company, for his customer. So I think that's what I would take. And of course, technical knowledge. I think that goes without saying. If you want to see the full interview and get access to secret scenes, you need to sign up for my exclusive mastermind program, The Customer Method, and get instant access. I created The Customer Method to give you all the strategies, playbooks, tools, and the support you'll need in order to take your customer success practice within your own organization to the next level. And there's never been a better time than now to step up your business customer success game. So go ahead, check out the description below on how to join us and I'll see you on the inside. This is how much education we need to do internally. If you want to be successful in your role and it's a recently established CSM role, make sure that you establish the swim lanes, clearly define the processes, clearly define roles and responsibility and educate on what kind of cadence meetings you're doing, how do you gauge for performance of your CSM and celebrate value delivered by your CSMs, not just to the client, but also to other internal teams. Hope this interview was sensationally helpful. I know I got a lot out of it. So you're so great. Thank you so much for taking the time and I wish you the best in your new position and continue to thrive in everything that you do. Thank you, Rit, for having me. It's always a pleasure. If you like this video, give it a like. Write in the comments below what were some of the aha moments that you got. And with that, it's a wrap. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you at the next video.